Standing here with me are some of the captains from the famous show Wicked Tuna. Hi guys. Hi, how you doing? Hello. Good, how are you doing? Can you guys kind of tell me the events that led up to having a hit series on the National Geographic show? I'll start with a phone call. Yep. Just a one phone call from a from Pilgrim uh, Films and Television and uh, just kind of branched out to Billy and the other boats and they uh, wanted to see if we were interested in doing a show on bluefin tuna fishing. And they came into town and they interviewed all of us in front of the camera, went back and uh, they looked at all, you know, Billy's, they looked at mine and all the other boats and they selected us. Nice. Here so we are. You got lucky. You got lucky. I like that. You got lucky. Exactly. So what's it like being on a reality show and trying to still run your business and catching tuna? Anyone? Well. Um, basically, when the show really starts, we, we give up doing um, charters because they make us fish a lot. So we uh, so we kind of give it up and go and go fishing. Strictly all commercial fishing. I mean, but then being on the boat when we're commercial fishing is really nothing different. It's just one extra person on the boat really never gets in the way, and actually sometimes we put them to work. And if they do get in the way, we we'll let them know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice. Um, are you one of the younger people on the show? I'd, I'd probably say I'm one of the younger guys, but it uh, doesn't mean anything with my age, you know. I can go and catch fish with the best of them, yep. and uh, I've been taught well. I've had some, uh, some great motivators and uh, some great captains I've dealt with, and uh, yeah, I feel very confident out there. How does your family handle you guys being on TV right now? Do you get a little special treatment, or do they kind of mock you? <laughs> they ask for a lot of free t-shirts. For friends and neighbors. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's pretty cool. Any way you go, people recognize you. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it definitely is. It's definitely a, it's a unique experience. Something I never thought in my lifetime I'd get to experience, and uh, something I'm sure I'll look forward, you know, look back on, you know, 20, 30 years from now. Uh, my family still treats me the same. You know, I'm still the same person. You know, as I was before. I just happen to be on TV now. Now they're filming what I do for a living. You know, it's pretty cool. I mean, I don't. Not like I don't like it, but I mean, it, the perks are great, and uh, it's been a blast so far. Okay, I've been fishing. I catch a lot of sunnies on our Great Lakes here. How hard is it to catch a big tuna, and what is the biggest tuna you've ever caught? The biggest tuna I have ever caught is his first. First six years ago on my boat. So it took me 30-something years to catch it, and it took him one day, and it was over. 1,200 pounds was a big one. Did you give that tuna a special name? I did not. No. <laughs> yeah, you did. Turn around. Okay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and where did the name Wicked Tuna come from? Was that an idea from one of the captains here, or was it from the TV show? It was from, uh, someone from Nat Geo, I believe. Yeah, it so. actually started out, um, what was the first name they picked? It was a different... Oh, it, it was uh, Blue Gold. Blue Gold. Blue Gold. Yeah. And then what, I mean, that's the perfect name for the show in Boston, Wicked, Wicked Tuna. Yep. It's, uh, it's, it's perfect. And I don't know, they asked us for our opinion and, uh, you know, I came up with the list, Billy came up with the list, he came up with the list, and how all of us missed that was, was beyond me. What has surprised you guys the most about being on reality TV? The best thing for me is the little kids. When they, uh, when they come to the boat, like if we're not fishing, they come to the boat and they shake. Shy. Yeah. I, w I would have never thought when we did the show, I thought it would be all, you know, adults. But, you know, that's we saw once we came in from fishing after the show had aired, all the people at the dock, and it's all families with young kids. I would have never thought that young kids would have been into it as much as they are. Yeah, the line up at the dock sometimes to come back in and, like, oh man, look at all these people, you know, they it's pretty cool. The, at the entrance to the river, they wait on the bridge, and then they, and as soon as they see one of the boats coming through, they run to the marina. <laughs> yeah. Very exciting. So do you have any big plans with the extra money you're making from doing the hit show, like maybe buying a yacht? A bigger boat. A bigger boat. Oh, yeah. Pay the fuel bill. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Travel and have fun, I guess. You you're going to be fishing all the time now. I you're on the boat 24 off. hours a day. It's true. Be traveling on the water. So do you have any big plans with the extra money you're making from doing the hit show, like maybe buying a yacht? Bigger boat. Bigger boat. Oh, yeah. Pay the fuel bill. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Travel and have fun, I you guess. Can. You're going to be fishing all the time now. I gotta You're on the boat 24 off. hours a day. It's true. Be traveling on the water. Does catching tuna run in your family? How did you guys start this business? 
I've been doing it since uh, 1972. Long time. And, uh, you know, the, the fish size, the last few years was, was a little bit smaller, but now it seems like the big ones are coming back. So, you know, um, we got, this year we got a couple of big ones. He got one, I got one. And um, it's, it's starting to look good again, you know. I know nobody, nobody in my family did it. It's just I just grew up from the street, you know, right at the docks. It was just something. I used to go down to the, instead of going to play soccer and baseball in the afternoon, getting home from school, I'd go down to the boats. And I've been doing it now for over 30 years. Yeah. I mean, I haven't fished since I could walk, but I mean, I'm commercial tuna fishing for a short time. But I've always loved it. Nobody in my family ever did it. You know, it's my uncle owned a dragger. That was about it. But no one ever tuna fished. I've always just had this passion for fishing and still going strong. What were the other types of jobs you guys had prior to fishing? I worked uh, for General Motors dealerships, service manager and diesel mechanic. So it's kind of good. It's, it's worked out well because I can fix my own boat now. <laughs> that does come in handy, doesn't it? Yeah, especially when you're 40 miles out. <laughs> so. I still, I'm a full-time airline captain for JetBlue. Still do that. So two full-time jobs. So if you're not in the water, you're in the air? the air that's right yep you're looking down <laughs> trying to see what's going on <laughs> every time a jet flies over we go look they're checking us out <laughs> times i've done that I, know. <laughs> I did see that some of the boats have airplanes flying over trying to find the fish yep. how do you guys feel about that different technique yeah, do whatever not, you choose it looks easy it's not easy if you don't have the eyes to do it you'll never be able to do it you've got to be it able takes to a lot of talent Definitely. Outside of uh, being on the boat or in the air, do you have other hobbies that you do when you're not doing reality TV? There's no time for anything else. No time? No time. We, we, fish, we fish more. Yeah, yeah. We, if there is time, we fish more, right? <laughs> when, we, when we are fishing, we are not only out for just a day. We can be sometimes, but we're out for five, six days at a time. And then even when we come in and offload our fish, we don't even shut the engine down sometimes. We'll put the fuel nozzle in, fuel up, get our food on board, get our ice, and we go right back out for another five days. So when we're fishing, we're fishing. When the cameras aren't rolling, how reality, <laughs> how much reality well, goes on? I think right? the, 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 with having the cameras on the boat, I think that, you know, we get a lot of interaction between the boats that they, they want us to do. So, you know, we, we fight a little, we do this, we do that. And, and it kind of makes it interesting. It's fun. As long as you don't take it serious. If you take it serious, you're screwed. <laughs> Are you guys a little more chummy when the cameras aren't on you guys with the other boaters? Or is it the relationship's pretty real is yeah, what we it's see? It's right? pretty real. I, yeah, I think, I think with the cameras being here now, we are more so, more competitive now than we were before. Yeah, I it mean, makes, it drives you to go more. Because we does. on the show, I mean, we, I on the show personally, with some, we want to have the biggest and the most fish and make the most money. Whereas before, we may not have expressed ourselves so much to say that, but now we say it more. You know, if he catches one fish, we get mad. You know, he's ahead of us and we're on TV. Yeah. And he's doing better than us, you know, so we want to, you know, excel and we want to out to him. And so we're more competitive now than we were before, no doubt about it. Yeah, that's for sure. Do you have any family members or friends coming to you and looking for a job? People are looking for jobs all the time now. All the now. time on the internet. Oh, yeah. Emails all the time. From all over the world, people yeah. are just emailing. I mean, I, since we've been talking here, I probably have two or three emails. I mean, it's just, I get a good 15, 20 days sometimes, looking for, people looking for work. How, what? It's pretty wild. It's amazing. I had one guy send me a, a, a DVD of his whole house and his whole life and, and working out in the gym. And I mean, you did, you did, did you ever that. see that thing? I mean, it's sick. It's, it's, it's like, you know, I'd be afraid of this guy. <laughs> That's a little too much information. <laughs> yeah. How did you guys meet and you get on board with each other? Um, I met through Dave. I met Dave through a family friend, and uh, he needed a guy one day. I was dying to go tuna fishing. Bam! I went with him and stuck ever since. That, was it. that 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 hook setting in that fish was the same as setting it to him. He caught that 1,200 pounder, and there was no looking back. Six yeah. years. Six years later. So. It hooked him, huh? Yeah. Basically, when you catch one, you're, hooked for life. you're done. It's all over. You, you know, we call it, some guys call it the cocaine of the sea. Oh. Yeah. Have you guys done many boat show events like this one? It, it's always going. I mean, someone's always doing something. Uh, you know, I, I've done a bunch of things for the Boy Scouts. 
Um, and some boat shows were island and around. We just came back from uh, Hollywood where we did, um, we did a uh, sit down for um, Television Critics Association and they asked us questions and stuff like that. And that was fun. We had a good time doing that. Yeah. yeah. And I'm really curious, how did you guys come up with the names of your personal boats? Um, I picked it because um, I don't think there's anything um, in the world that has a bigger bounty, except for maybe, uh, maybe Osama bin Laden, uh, <laughs> that people are chasing him. <laughs> I might cut that out. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, I don't, I don't think, I'll say it again, I don't think there's anything in the world that has a bigger bounty on its head. And the tuna. And the tuna. Right. Now, the, the, uh, the tuna.com, I, I cannot take credit for it. It was my partner way back when, a couple decades ago, when it was the dot-com boom, the tech stocks and all that, everything was this dot-com, this, that dot-com. We just simply threw in the tuna in front of dot-com, and hence tuna.com. You guys actually have a new season starting on February 16th. Can you give us a small glimpse of what we'll be seeing? A lot of fish, yeah. a lot of drama, and somebody wins. Yeah. Just keep it at that. But it's going to be action-packed, and this year, this season, season three, is more competitive than it ever has been between all of us. And, and things change, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, new, there's a couple of new boats on the, on the, on the show. And um, everybody makes it interesting. I think it's going to be good. Make sure you watch the new season of Wicked Tuna, February 16th. It's going to be a good one. Uh, you're going you're to see a lot. You're going to see uh, all the boats caught a lot of fish this year. Uh, there was a lot of big fish caught, a lot of bad weather, a lot of drama, uh, a couple of mishaps, um, a few long, long battles. Uh, we fought a fish for 10 hours. And uh, it's just going to be it's going to be an exciting episode. It's going to be an exciting series to watch. I think everybody will enjoy it. Sunday night. 9 p.m., same as last year, February 16th. Cool. All right, well, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you guys on February 16th. Thanks, All right, good luck to you. Thank yeah. you. Thanks.